Tina Cooks, more Italian. This is made possible through the generous support of KC's Body Connections Massage Center, connecting body, mind, and spirit. G's Hot Dog Cafe, home of the Chicago Dog. Enterprise Bank, we help create opportunities for your business. Papa John's Pizza, Lemonster, Fitchburg, Marlboro, and Worcester. Today, by popular demand, cannoli. Stay tuned. Welcome to Tina Cook's More Italian. I'm Tina Pimerini. We're going to start out with our cannoli shells. Now this is not a pan. This is my cannoli pipes. And these I'll show how they work later on, just in case you're wondering what they are on my counter. Okay, we're going to start out with our shells. We have two tablespoons of butter. We need a tablespoon of sugar. Now this is kind of like, almost like you want to handle this like a, a pie crust, but we're going to actually put the sugar into the butter first. You're just going to take the back of your spoon and press it. Press it in. Not press it. Press it. <laughs> My tongue's tied today. <laughs> okay. Now these are a little bit, cannolis are probably one of the nicest Italian pastries you can make. They're a little labor intensive, but not too, too bad. All right, now we have the butter and the sugar together. So now I want to take all the butter off my back of my spoon. And now I like to sift the flour, the powder, and the salt, okay? So we're going to put this kind of like over here for a minute. We need a cup and a half of flour, okay? So I'm going to just take my cup first because if we put this on the, in there in the sieve without putting it over the butter, it's going to make a mess. So we need a cup and a half of flour. We need a teaspoon of baking powder. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a teaspoon. It's a little heaping, it'll just make it a little puffy. Put it right on top there. And all I need is a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Okay, I'm just gonna take that and I'll put that on that side. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sift these all together. Just like this. When you sift the flour, it lightens it up. It makes it, uh, it takes all the lumps out and it lightens it up. See, there's not too many, just one lump. Now this is where you're gonna treat it like a pie crust. You're gonna just work your butter into your flour. Just rub it into your hands like this. Make sure it goes all the way through so that your flour and your butter gets almost like oatmeal, just like a pie crust would. Okay, loosen it all up from the bottom. Make sure you get it up. I'm gonna rub this through. Now, when this is all mixed, very short, in, in a few minutes, I'm gonna start adding wine. That's what brings all this together. You don't use ice water or anything like that. You're gonna use either a masala wine or a white wine or a sparkling wine, but something that you can drink because if you can't drink it, then you shouldn't be cooking with it, okay? Now you can see that the butter is all through here, okay? And it's nice and all broken up through. And it's about a half a cup of, of white wine, but you're gonna need to um, make sure you mix it in, just like the, you would a pie crust, a little bit at the time. This is a sparkling wine, okay? because you don't want to mix it too much because it will it'll get tough so we're just going to incorporate this and you just keep adding in a little bit of wine till you you get your dough together okay i've seen the made with masala wine too that's a sweet that's a sweet wine okay so now we'll be, i'm better with this hand 
And then I'm going to pour the rest of this in there because I think I'm going to need it. So there we go. Now you just want to mix this together. Now when you're done with this dough, okay, it's, it's going to be not this, not too sticky, but a little bit. This is a little bit sticky. But I'm just going to roll it around this flour so that you can make it into a ball, okay? And then I'm just going to come over here and get my saran wrap. Because what you have to do is you have to wrap this up in saran wrap and you've got to give this a good half an hour chill in the refrigerator because you want the butter and everything to get nice and cold. So we're going to wrap this up just like this. This is going to go into the refrigerator for a half an hour and we'll be back. All right, while we're waiting for that dough to chill, we're going to start on the filling. Now, if you notice, half of this regatta is gone because I had to make half of it the day before. Because when you make a, a regatta filling like this, unless it's a really, really good Italian regatta that's real thick, you want to make sure that it sets overnight. Because what I do is you put it in a strainer with a little bit of a cheesecloth or a clean cloth, and you let it strain so that all the, all the whey comes out of the regatta. So I'm actually going to make half a batch right now. Now normally you would use two pounds of regatta with a cup and a half of sifted confectionery sugar, three quarters of a cup of, I use Cool Whip, you could use a real whipped cream, but the whipped cream deflates after a while. I find the Cool Whip holds up a little better. And then you're going to add some vanilla. So we're going to start out with our regatta. And then I'm going to take, because I'm doing a half a batch right now, three quarters of a cup of confectionery sugar. And yeah, I'm going to sift this because I don't want any lumps in my um, filling. So here's the three quarters of a cup. I'm going to tap it right into the sifter. Okay. And then we're going to sift this out. I'm going to fill this about halfway with the Cool Whip because you're supposed to use three quarters of a cup of Cool Whip. Okay, so that's a little bit more than halfway, but that's okay. Cool Whip adds a nice flavor to it. Like I said, you can use a nice, you know, fresh whipped cream if you want to. I just think that it holds better. Now, when you mix this up, a two pound um, regatta is going to be almost just enough for these shells, what you're going to get. Probably going to get about three dozen shells. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. All right, about two, two I'm supposed to add two teaspoons, but I'm going to add one because we're doing half a batch because I did the other half before. Okay. Now that's all it is. It's, it's confectionery sugar, it's uh, regatta, Cool Whip, or whipped cream, whichever one you prefer, and uh, vanilla. Now you're going to see how thin this gets. See, when you put the Cool Whip in and the vanilla and everything and the confectionery sugar and all that, it's going to just get really thin. Okay. Now this is the regatta filling. I'm going to set this aside for now because if you don't like regatta or if you're on a diet or if you want to cut your calories or whatever, what I like to do too, this is another nice thing to do. Um, this is a low cal version because I use skin milk and I use um, instant pudding. You could use a sugar free pudding if you wanted to take, make it even less calories. I have a cup and a half of milk, okay. I'm going to add one package of lemon pudding. It's instant pudding. And I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of Cool Whip in here. And then I'm just going to whisk it. Now what's going to happen is this is going to get thick, thick, thick. And um, you want to do this the day before too if you can. It would be the best, you know, the best thing to do is the day before because then it all has time to, to set up and get nice and thick. And these make, this makes a good filling. You can use a custard filling. You could use a lemon pudding. You can use a chocolate pudding. 
Um, they have pistachio pudding. You can do a lot with these cannolis. You don't have to just fill them with regatta. Okay, so this is going to go in the refrigerator. Now, what I want you to do, Kyle, is I want you to walk over to the refrigerator with me for a moment because this is how I set up my regatta when I drain it. It's in a glass bowl. It's in my strainer. Okay, and there's, there's way down in the bottom. And you just cover it up with a little bit of plastic. And you put it in here, and it's already starting to get thicker than what it was. So when you let it sit overnight, all the whey comes out. And it will continue to drain, because you'd be surprised how much water and how much whey is in some of this, this regatta that you buy in the markets. Like I said, if you get an Italian specialty shop where it's nice and thick and you got a good, good regatta, you might not want to strain it. I always do. So this is our regatta filling and our lemon filling. And when we come back, we'll be frying our cannoli. Now, as you can see, this dough has puffed up nice. Ooh, -hoo -hoo, it's going to be great. Now, what we're going to do is I have a little flour here. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour right there. Now, you don't want to go nuts with the flour, but you don't want the dough to stick to you either. And you want to keep it covered when you're not working with it, okay? Okay, just a little tiny bit on the top, because you don't want it, like I said, you don't want it to stick to you. Now, I, what I do is I have eight, I have a little fryer later that I use. I've always used a, a frying pan, but with my gas stove, I have a hard time doing the cannolis because the gas gets really hot and it's, it's, it's difficult to time it without a thing. So my kids chipped in one Christmas and got me this great little Cuisinart Fryolator. I love it. It's awesome. And you also need to find yourself some cannoli tubes. Now I've seen people cut copper pipes. Um, the best thing to do is either go to a specialty shop. I got mine in Boston down in the North End. And go buy yourself a couple of boxes. They come in boxes of eight, okay? And I got a few uh, cannoli uh, tubes. Three boxes were great, okay? So you need the tubes. You need an egg wash. This is just an egg beaten. I didn't put any water or anything to it. I use this. This is a pasta cutter. But I got this at, um, I think it was in the north end I got this too. And it just helps you cut the um, cannoli so that they're all even. My aunt, who I learned how to make cannolis from, Auntie Sunny Marama, um, actually used a little ruler. We used to cut ruler three and a half, three and a half by three and a half. So that's what we usually do. The smaller ones, two, two and a half, they're very, very small. I like to make them about three, three and a half, even four. Four is a good size cannoli. So where is my cutter? Here we go. So naturally, I'm going to use my pasta roller. Now you want to make the shape of this dough a little bit you know, rectangle. You don't want it to, you know, you don't want to waste any dough because this is, um, you know, you took a lot of time to make this dough. So you want to make sure you, you use it right. You're going to need a little bit of flour. So put a little pile of flour here. Okay. And we're going to start this out on one. There we go. And we're going to start rolling. Okay. And then roll it down to four. Every once in a while, you got to stop the flour, right? You don't want it to stick. Okay, now this should be down to four. Now you want them nice and thin so that they're nice and crispy. Flour them just a little bit. Don't stick. Okay, that's four. We're going to go down to four. And there we go. That's our last roll. Okay. So now we have this nice sheet. of cannoli dough. We're going to take our little roller. Now if it's not exactly, exactly, you want to just roll. This is how I do it. Like I said, you can do it with a, um, I'm going to cut this right about here. 
because I'll still use that little piece. And I'll cut this right about here because I'll still fold that over. And I'm just going to pull off these. You can use a knife. You can use the trimmer once you mark off your dough. Put your dough under the bag. You don't want it to stay out. You don't want it in the air at all. You want it to stay nice and covered. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut them. And I'm going to move them out of the way. Because I don't want to double cut. Okay. This is something you kind of have to take your time with and, and really think about what you're doing. You don't want to rush through cannolis. And this is why they're a labor of love, because they take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. But when you get to eat them, they're a whole lot of fun. <laughs> and I usually do one strip at a time, and I fry, because I only have um, 12 pipes, so I can only do 12 cannolis at a time. So I can do one dozen at a time. There we go. Okay, so now, what you do is you take your egg wash. I'm going to slide down here a little bit. Okay, use your finger. You can use a brush. Now, the, the thing with egg wash, this egg, is you don't want it to touch the pipe. If it touches the pipe, then the cannoli is going to stick to the pipe. Okay? So you just want to get one end and roll, and don't let it touch the pipe because it does stick. I've, I've done it, and when you do it, you'll find out that... <laughs> It's not any fun, because then when you go to take the cannolis off, they tend to, to break. And uh, they're very delicate when you, when you take them off the pipes, so you have to go very careful. Now, me and my daughter usually fry these together. She usually helps me fry cannolis, and um, we have a system when we fry, okay? I'm going to dump some of these in. I have the fryer laid on about 375. They're going to take about 50... 55 seconds. They don't take a long time. Okay? Here we go. Now, when they're frying, okay, and you're working with someone, those pipes are intensely hot. So usually I don't let her take the cannolis off the pipes. I take the cannolis off the pipes. And then I stand my cannoli pipes up so that she knows those pipes are hot. If you grab them, you're going to burn. So you have to be careful when you're working with a friolator or when you're doing something like this because it gets very hot and you don't want to, anybody to get burned. And especially when you're working with kids or small children, make sure they stay away from the friolator and they stay away from the, the heat. You don't want them to get burned. Okay, and these are our cannolis. I have a cookie sheet with a paper bag and some paper towels. And I'm going to let those drain on there a little bit. And I'm just going to continue to fry until all my pipes and all my dough is used. And we're going to have all these nice cannoli shells. I'm going to come over here and show you how to take these off real quick. All right. Now, remember, these pipes are hot. If you need time for them to cool off, you give them time to cool off. Okay. I use a towel because it helps my my fingers. And then I stand my pipes up because you know what? Those pipes are hot. And there we go. We have our cannolis. Aren't those wonderful? Oh, they're going to be delicious. can already tell. This is going to be a little bit deformed, but I'm going to show you what I do. I, I'm going to show you a different dessert too, which I'm going to fry a couple of these just square. All right, just so you can see. I'm going to do something a little bit different than usual with my cannoli uh, shell. Oh boy. Turning them over is going to be a little bit difficult, but I'll get it done. There we go. I'm going to let that go another minute. I'm going to continue to cut these into squares. Get a nice good size square. Anything that's a little 
deformed. I show you what I do with it. I love, I love this. It's a very light, crispy dough. And you can layer it like a Napoleon, which is what I like to do, especially like in the summertime. Get fresh berries, and you can use custards or puddings, and you layer them just like a Napoleon, and they're delicious just like that. All right, this one I think can come out. Oh, yeah, see? And let that drain. Turn that one over, and of course I want a third layer, so we're gonna drop that little pot in there too. And then while those are going, I'm gonna start some more tubes. Just on the very end and don't get egg on your tube. It's very important. Okay, now I'm gonna continue to fry these up and finish all my shells, which with this, this amount of dough, we should get about three dozen. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you how we stuff them and how we eat them. Okay, now there's one other touch I have to do to these cannolis because my daughter loves them dipped in dark chocolate. So now what I did was I bought chocolate that you melt, okay, and I put it in a water bath so that it gets nice and, nice and thin and, and, and you can dip your cannolis nice and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spoon out because we don't need the spoon in there. Okay. And I'm going to take this cannoli and I'm going to hold on to the end of it and I'm going to dip it right in there. And then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to let this chocolate just drip right out of it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side and then I'll do the other. set this down. I'm going to let that harden a little bit before I do the other side. And then I'm going to grab another one and I'm going to put that in there and roll this around so that it gets most of it. And then you just let it drip out. She loves these dipped in chocolate and basically this is what you do. I bought a nice uh, semi-sweet chocolate that you, you um, can cook with. Sometimes I don't even dip the other half. I leave it out like that. But So I'm just going to dip a few more of these, and this is basically how you dip your cannolis. Okay, now on the holidays, this is how I present my cannolis. Because I do not like to stuff my cannolis until I'm going to eat my cannolis. So I usually put out a dish with all the cannolis around it, chocolate, whatever. These are the pistachio nuts I ground up. These are chocolate, little tiny chocolate morsels. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to take these, these little ones that I fried. Remember I told you we're going to do something different with those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer myself a nice little Napoleon. And I'm going to put a little bit of regatta, like that, and a little bit of nuts, like this. I'm going to do another layer and I'm going to use some lemon pudding. Now look at how nice and thick this is. This is just pudding. Now when you put these in the cannolis, it's going to be great. And I'm going to just sprinkle a little chocolate on there too. Oh, that's going to be delicious. And then we're going to put this on top. And we're going to take a little bit of whipped cream like that. And this is from when I put my chocolate in the freezer for my cannoli, see? Excellent. A little bit of chocolate all the way around. Now you can use fresh fruit on these too, which is really, really good. Now when we stuff our cannolis, we just take, I leave it in the bowl. You can use a pastry tube if you want, but I've always stuffed them just like this. Just take your regatta and put them right inside, like this. Pack it in there. Okay. And then you're going to want to turn it over. You can see it's starting to come out on this side and just pack it in like that. Now at this point you can, number one, you can dip it in your chocolate, get a nice little chocolate end, or dip it in your pistachios and get a nice little pistachio end. And just to show you how flexible these are, 
I'm gonna take a chocolate dipped one, boy there's still a lot of chocolate on this one, and I'm gonna fill it with the lemon filling. And the same rule applies, you just pop it right in there. And this really does make a very, very good filling. Make sure they're stuffed good. And these are our cannolis. And they are delicious. Ready? So am I gonna get to try these? Yes, you do. Let me try one. Like that? I wanna try this too. You wanna try this too? It's very clear. Oh. Our love is here to stay. <laughs> Not for a year. Mm. Maybe a couple of days. Here, try the lemon. Mm. Oh, is that good? There you go. See, they're not just cannolis. You can do a lot with cannoli shells. In it's... time, the Rockies may crumble, Gibraltar may tumble. They're only made of clay. But these cannolis are here to stay. Oh, it's rude to talk with your mouth full. I know it. Why don't you sign off so we can shut off the camera? Oh, okay. I'm so into my cannolis. <laughs> Thank you for watching Tina Cook's More Italian. Have a good night. Okay, now when I do cannolis, I like to have different toppings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grind up some pistachio nuts because I like to put them on the ends of my cookies, So I mean on my cannolis. So I'm going to put these over here like this, drop them in. I don't want to get too many, I don't want shells, so we're going to make sure we don't get any shells. Okay. And Adam, you better not even be in that cannoli stuff yet. And drop my cannolis and Kyle's Adam, are you he's eating cannolis? He's eating cannolis already, Kyle. We're not ready yet. He's eating them. You never have anything nice. Okay. How are they, Adam? I can tell you're in my, my cannolis, Adam. Well, oh, take a bite. How's the feeling? Good? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's put the filling back. Yeah, you can't even finish the show yet. You gotta have them in here.